for online sales, APAC at Twitter, Miss Aliza Knox. <laughs> um, thanks, Nikki. Uh, I didn't notice she ran, she scrambled off quickly, but did you notice she wore Twitter colored pants? I just want you to know that. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just going to put my bird here. You can take pictures of it later. Tweet, tweet about it. So, thank you for having me. I do, I run a small and medium sized business for Twitter. It's called Online Business um, in Asia and Latin America. And what I want to talk to you about today is how Twitter and the data that comes with it not only helps uh, countries and cities become smarter nations, but also makes life easier for citizens and gives scientists and researchers a lot of data to play with. So I just want to ask a question. It's late in the afternoon. I know, I know you're not here for me. I know you're here because there's that really cool draw in about an hour. But does anybody know how many tweets there are a day? Come on, you guys are data geeks. How many pieces of data can you get a day from Twitter? Billion. One billion. OK. There are 500 million tweets a day, so you can get more data than that. They all have words in them. So it took us three years, two months, and a day to get our first billion tweets, and now we get a billion every two days. Lots of data to play with. A live, public, conversational platform, and it's based around interest. So the data, the big data that comes with Twitter, is very heavily around what people are interested in, what engages them. So you'll see a picture of me here, and some of the things I follow. Mr. Brown, um, Twitter. I added men's health today after listening to all those doctors this morning about, right before lunch, about getting more sleep. And I, I've got two boys and a husband, so I thought I better find out about their health. I'm very healthy. So, um, and in terms of the data that this provides, we do actually have a public API. I think it's dev.twitter.com forward slash um, streaming forward slash public, and you can Google that. And we also acquired a company not long ago called GNIP, G-N-I-P, that has a power tracker tool that has full fidelity data that is available for sale. And we do also give Twitter grants in some cases. So a lot of data is out there for people to leverage already. And it's very interesting, it's very unique, because although there are lots of apps, um, we are the only live public conversational platform where you can see what people are talking about in terms of what interests them. So this just gives you an idea. I know you've seen lots of heat maps and charts today. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some more because they're fun. Twitter has we announced yesterday in the U.S. 284 million monthly active users, 80% of whom are on mobile, and 73% of those users are outside the U.S. and obviously heavily in this region. We've got very active social media in Asia and very active on mobile. Um, lots of people tweet. Uh, recently, the Mars Orbiter tweeted to the Mars Land Rover. We also say Lee Seung Woon uh, tweeting, um, Steve Leonard tweets, the IDA tweets. It should have been up on my last chart. If you haven't followed them, it's IDA under slash Singapore. You should be following them as part of today. Um, and normal people like you and I tweet. We tweet about what interests us. And that, because of that, you get great content and great data from Twitter. And great ways for marketers and brands to connect with individuals as well. So let me tell you about some of the kinds of data that you get from us, as well as other social media networks. You've heard other people up here, Google's been up here. Um, there, there's lots of data you can get from social media. I only have the pictures from Twitter, but of course this is relevant to other networks as well. So one thing is breaking news. I'm sure most of you live in the region. Uh, we obviously had a coup in Thailand not that long ago. And a lot of times now the news breaks on Twitter. So expected news like Obama making a speech, that doesn't break on Twitter. Somebody knows to have journalists there. But unexpected news, like a plane landing in the Hudson, like a coup, like um, more data about an Ebola outbreak, that often happens first on Twitter because there's like a citizen journalist there to capture it. So whether you're a news jock or a data jock, 
this is the kind of thing you might want to be following. Politics. This is the election in Brazil. And there's a lot of political data now that researchers are working with that's quite interesting. What you see behind me is a heat map of who's tweeting about which politician in the Brazil election, which should give you some sort of insight to um, who might be winning or who might be ahead. So actually I have to get up here and really, really small. I can't remember who's who. I think Juma is blue um, and Ayasio is red. And so you can see in different parts of Brazil how people are responding, talking about the politicians. And you can also match that up with what are the issues. So my Portuguese isn't too good, but uh, we can see education here and economics here. So these are the issues you can see from what people are tweeting about that really concern them in the election. So rather than having to guess about what do people care about and with what topics are they connecting the politicians, we can actually get real-time live data about that. Here's another election closer to home. Uh, we all know Jokowi won in Indonesia. Again, a map of how people were tweeting before the election. Green is Jokowi, blue is Kabbalah. And there were 95 million tweets for people to analyze related to the Indonesian election. But what we have behind me is a list of, we call these reverb charts, but it actually just shows where the conversation was, what day it peaked, and what it was about. And the top one here is about the election day, and this one here is about the inauguration, which happened, is it last week? Last week or the week before? And what the circles show is who they were talking about for the different politicians or uh, some of the issues that came up. So again, lots of different ways to amass the data. You can do it by where the tweets are coming from, what are the keywords, how does it coordinate with the issues, but you can get a lot of insights about political environment. One more on politics, although not so much about elections, the umbrella revolution in Hong Kong, um, a crisis for Hong Kong and China government, and again, some social data related to this. So we can see that the protesters started to occupy Hong Kong. People were tweeting about it. Here are the first few days where tensions ran incredibly high where we first saw people use the umbrellas, where we saw the police come in, um, and where there were lots and lots of photos, as you can see, um, and lots of protesters basically massing in um, the main business area of Hong Kong, occupying Central. Then things calmed down a bit. There have been some particular spikes around renewed negotiations between the students and the governments. So again, you can get an instant, real time, uh, view of what are the issues, what are people talking about. Let's move on to a different kind of crisis. This one's about the Jammu and Kashmir flood relief. So we have all sorts of natural disasters, unfortunately, um, and hopefully they don't get too bad. I don't know how many of you are watching the lava flows on the Big Island of Hawaii at the moment, but they've just started to touch a house, so I saw that on Twitter a couple hours ago. Um, one of the, the biggest early uses of Twitter in a crisis was the tsunami in Japan over three years ago now, where people used Twitter to find their relatives, find out if people were okay, find ways to get out of the affected region. So most recently in India, what happened was the tweets were not only to find people, um, and this happened with Haiyan and Venus too, uh, rescue efforts have been taking place on Twitter. And again, you know, when I say Twitter, read other social networks, it's not us alone. The difference between us is, and those is that we are real time, but of course people are using a variety of networks to get aid to victims. So you can see that social data is showing firsthand reports of the disaster, checking in with family and friends, emotional support, and then getting relief to people. So you can see here, here are the first tweets about what's happening, tweets about, you know, I'm hearing people to safety, I, I've recovered someone. Moving to treat to that, how do we get goods to the airport? Which corporations are interested in helping us? You know, Air Asia helped, uh, for example, get supplies. There was, there was a team of um, 10 or 12 people who coordinated a lot of these relief efforts. They had never met each other. They found each other on Twitter, um, mostly ethnic Indians, 
who uh, really wanted to coordinate supply efforts, got corporates on board. And one of the most interesting things I learned is that after this, they wanted to meet each other. So they set up a conference call. And one of the women declined. And they were a little bit surprised. Like they had formed this really tight-knit group who felt like they made a huge difference as citizens to coordinate relief efforts. And it turned out she was deaf. So it's quite interesting. She's been a really big part of this. And of course, there are ways to help um, you know, visually impaired people too. But it was kind of nice that we have this visual um, system where she was able to participate without really being able to communicate in an auditory sense. OK, another way, yep, another way that gets used that's a little, um, I suppose, less deep and meaningful but still fun and interesting is the World Cup. Um, so social data can also be used for fun things. And I'm, you can see here the Brazil versus Croatia game behind me. Croatia is blue, Brazil is yellow. Um, and you can see lots of discussion all over the world. You know, heavy in Croatia and Brazil, but obviously other sports fans and people live in different places. And when it gets really um, lit up, kind of almost looks like an explosion, that's a goal. So there were 12 million tweets during the opening match of the World Cup. And then, um, which is this one, and over 672 million tweets for the entire World Cup tournament, which, you know, is kind of a data scientist's dream, I guess, particularly if you happen to like sports. Then, um, let's get to safety. So, I'm actually married to a guy from Perth, Western Australia. I know there's only a few people there, and I probably met the only man from there, but I am, I am married to this person. I met him in Sydney. Um, you know, it's one of those places where uh, there's a lot of kangaroos and there's a lot of sharks, unfortunately. So I do swim there all the time. You know, I think generally it's safe, but the surf uh, lifesavers are the guys in the red and yellow suits and women. They do keep an eye out for sharks. And there was this really good idea last year um, from people, both the surf lifesaving and oceanography, and they said, why don't we try to tag the sharks and then the sharks can tweet us when they're coming to shore to let us know they're in and they're hungry, and maybe we'll give them something besides our kids. We'll throw them a few hamburgers or something. So what's actually happened is that there are, I think, about 300 sharks tagged. And you can see they're not very fun, these sharks. They don't really have, you know, usually we advise clients to do creative tweets. So these sharks, so far we haven't trained them up to say too much. Like, I think they should sort of say, mother of three, very hungry, or just been to the dentist, big smile, come meet with me. But so far, they just kind of say, hey, I'm here, I'm a tiger shark, I'm, I'm at this beach at this time. So, not quite the entertainment content I like yet, but still pretty good for getting people off the beach. There have been a few incidents of birth over the last few years, and this, um, A, it keeps people out of water when the sharks are there, and B, we really hope it keeps them on Twitter. So, while they're at the beach. Here's an example from Brazil, where um, Sky TV noticed that lots of people were tweeting at them and going onto Twitter to find out when their favorite programs were showing. So Sky TV said, hey, this is really cool. We're getting all this data about how people want to interact with us. Why don't we use it? So they actually built a proactive way that people could use a hashtag. You probably all know hashtags, right? And you can hashtag a topic. Uh, that you want people to keep track of, or a hashtag you know, the name of this conference. And so they set up a hashtag called SkyRec, Rec for Recording, so that you could tweet back at them if you wanted to, your own recording device to record the show. They set up a way that if you tweeted back with hashtag SkyRec, they would send a message with your home recording device that you'd already set up to connect to this to record it. So if you went out during the day and you didn't know when your show was going to be on or you forgot, you could actually send a message to your TV to record it. So made life very convenient for citizens so they don't need to miss their favorite shows. It was great for Sky TV and kind of a fun way to see the data about what shows people really want to watch. Kojak Bank in um, India did something similar for banking. You see a few banks now trying to set up social apps. I've seen some on Facebook, some on Twitter. Um, people are spending more and more time on social media, and maybe they want to, you know, they interact with brands by tweeting at you. Maybe they want to talk about a hair care product. Um, I've often used an example where uh, someone went on sometime last year and said, hey, does anybody know a good airline to fly from KL to Singapore? And 
GetStar responded. Tiger was noticeably absent in this case, and so was Air Asia. And there was this really interesting dialogue where this person actually bought a JetStar ticket in the course of the Twitter stream. I wouldn't say that always happens. But the brands were able to actively engage with their customers. And they saw other people advising the person's name was, was Mickey, not just because that's our announcer's name. That happens to actually be that fact. Um, and so a few other people came on and said, hey, I would fly this route on JetStar. And then JetStar came in and said, oh, thank you, Ella. Thank you. Um, I forgot the name, Ivan. And they were able to connect with their customers and at the same time, so reinforce those relationships and at the same time, sell a ticket to this person Mickey. So you see a lot of brands interacting. And this bank wanted to take it further and allow people to do basic transactions. So they've actually launched the first ever social media full platform where you can do basic transactions by tweeting at the bank. So unlike a social media handle where you know somebody is actually running that handle for an agency or for the client and tweeting at you, this is actually set up in an automated way so that particular hashtags or particular tweets can do a basic transaction like deposit money, withdraw money, transfer money, ask for something. So I'm not sure you could set up your entire private banking suite yet on this, but it's a very early start to what you can do with all of the social data that's available. Here's another one, back to kind of municipalities and safety. There's a lot of crowdsourcing using Twitter for government agencies. So this is um, the police in Canberra, which is the kind of city state that is Australia's capital. And I think about eight months ago, there was a carjacking, which is bad enough, but actually what happened, the carjacker didn't realize there was a baby in the back of the car. So they had stolen this woman's car, and of course she was you know, hysterical because her baby was in the back. And the carjacker abandoned it because it was, you know, I don't think they really wanted the responsibility of the baby with the car. But of course it wasn't gonna turn in the baby. So the police alerted, you know, here's the car, here's what it looks like, this is, you know, this is what we're looking for. Um, and someone saw the car, tweeted at the police, and what you can see here is the very happy outcome of this baby getting back to its mother. And you know, the, the huge risk is, particularly in the heat in Australia, that a baby in a car too long will possibly die because of the heat and, and suffocation. And so, because Twitter's live in real time, they were able to crowdsource this, find this child, and get it back to the family. So it's a really you know, great, happy ending story of how you can use Twitter and Twitter data um, to benefit society and, and smart nations. Here's another one, not quite as much fun, food poisoning. Um, but a researcher in, I think, the University of Rochester in New York started correlating data between people talking about food poisoning and restaurants in New York that had recently received low ratings from health and safety inspections. And so they were able to track, starting to understand where there might be food poisoning outbreaks. And you can see that being used in lots of different places. I'll show you another one in a minute, but for epidemics and for health in general. Being able to track um, where there might be outbreaks of a disease um, and how to get information out to deal with it, see who might be impacted by looking at the data that comes real time with people tweeting words like stomach ache, you know, food poisoning, sick, terrible restaurant, you know, don't feel good, that sort of, that sort of thing. And so moving on to that, you know, going from sort of food poisoning in New York to actual epidemics, health maps um, is here and showing, identifying uh, what's, what's happening globally with disease outbreaks is using this data to try to look at where there might be outbreaks. And so there's obviously existing data, and I know um, Google also uses it to look at like flu tracker where things might happen. This is a great complement to all of that because again, this is real time. So you see absolutely in the minute what people are talking about. So you know what might be happening somewhere, and they're using it to do things like combat malaria outbreaks early. So in closing, there's a small city in Spain called June, and it's actually a smart city. They are resource constrained, which is, is different than 
Um, Singapore, I know we're not completely flooded with resources, but we're very well endowed. That's why we're going to be the first smart nation and are already well on track to that. But these guys have almost nothing. So the local mayor has basically taken the step of doing all business in the town on Twitter. And we've actually had them speak at a couple of events, which is really fun. They have an official Twitter account. It's displayed on everything, police uniforms, trucks, police cars. And they've actually completely integrated Twitter into the town government so that the town can respond quickly, right? It's real time, so they can see what people are talking about. They can respond to them. Citizens can respond to each other. And they can coordinate everything for the whole town, real time, live, public, so that everyone can participate. So I hope that gives you some overview of the kinds of data that's available and how that might data, how that data might help companies, individuals, and governments build smarter nations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elise. Appreciate it. We're happy to answer Let me see. Let me see. Tweet, tweet. Come back here with your coordinated pants. <laughs> Do you need me? Do you need me? I don't know. Oh, does anybody have a question? Yeah, I want to see if people have questions. Come on. This is, well, okay, your well, last chance. Can I ask a question? How yeah. many people here are on Twitter? Really? Okay, well, I hope that those of you who don't have your hand up are at least excited enough now to go out and sign up. Just go to twitter.com, give you instructions. How can you miss out on all this? Yes. Plus, we don't have your data, which is as everybody before me said, anonymized, private, we can't see anything. Except, well, I can see Steve Leonard's because I follow him. But other than that, you know, we don't know who you are. So it's, it's, uh, so there was a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Mike's there. Um, Sorry, they're setting up here. These are oh, stuff on the side. My, my thanks for the many great examples. I think it's very inspiring. Uh, the question that I have is, what if, if people in some of these examples uh, have been using very different hashtags? Um, to what extent is Twitter able to then already clean up this data for you for your analysis, or is this something that you'd have to do uh, on your own if you are on the data visualization analytics side? Yeah, so on the analytics side, I think um, basically you can use a hashtag as a start, but it will only give you the core group because not everybody uses a hashtag. So for example, if someone uses a hashtag like Smart Nation Conference, I can find it more easily, but it's discoverable if I just put in keywords. So as a data scientist, you do have to go broader, I think, to look at, you might get a core group using the hashtag, and then you probably have to go a bit broader. And even if there were a high use of hashtag, like the stuff I showed you for politics, um, you know, you want to go beyond that to see what people are talking about. So, uh, you know, recently, um, I'm just trying to think of, of, a, of a hashtag that, you know, so hashtag smart nation, right? You get all the core users who understand smart nation, but you all, might also want to look for things like data scientists, data conference, Singapore and data, so that you see the broader realm of what people are talking about. And I think, I know there are some groups in Singapore already doing a lot of data analysis, like LARC, and they, you know, they use, they go broader in terms of using different keywords and signals to see if they're covering everything. 